One thing I want to point out with the security man camera, as you can see, I attempted to mount my camera hanging down from the eaves. To me, this sound did uh, pretty much ideal. I've seen other cameras hung like this. It's protected from the elements. Uh, it, you know, it can fit in there just fine. Here is the problem. I'm going to hold up the screen right now. As you can see, the top right corner there is the picture for this camera. Well, it's upside down, and there doesn't appear to be any way to change the orientation now. Obviously, I can hold the screen upside down and everything looks great. Well, if you're okay with that, then the, this should be fine, but as you can see, there's an antenna on the bottom, so it kind of makes it inconvenient to keep this thing upside down all the time. That's all I wanted to touch on for this part of the video. Uh, if you can hang these things right side up, or even if you can hang them at a 45 degree angle, you can see right there that there's a small ball socket that will let you turn the camera so it could be upright at a 45 degree angle, but it isn't enough to let the camera turn all the way upside down when it's hanging from the eaves like that. So if you're planning to do that, this might not be the right camera for you. That's all. I'm going to continue my review of the Security Man iSecurity 2 camera system. I want to review the touchpad that comes with it, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth about the cameras and some of the details about them. So the Security Man TV screen, as you can see here, one of the camera, one of the videos just went off. I'm going to click the button on top. That's the power button, and it also ch causes the uh, cameras to come back into focus when sometimes they they lose con lose contact, uh, and that happens pretty regularly. And that's one of the things I want to discuss today. So first let me talk a little bit about the touchpad itself. As you can see, I have it plugged in right now. And one of the reasons for that is very poor battery life. The battery lasts less than four hours when unplugged, the, unit, uh, the battery in the unit, and it is not replaceable. So you're not really going to be able to take this unit uh, into a, the bedroom, for example, when you're going to sleep. Uh, it has to be pretty much in its docking station for any extended when it's going to be used for any extended period of time. So you're going to have to put the docking station wherever you want to regularly use it. And I suspect for a lot of people, uh, if you have it for home security, that would probably be in your bedroom. Uh, it's kind of inconvenient. It's not exactly how you'd like it to work. Uh, it does have an alarm system so that you could put it in another room and you could hear it and go check it if something goes off. But it's not really an ideal setup. And I know that it could be an improvement for some people over a plug into a TV like a lot of security systems have. But... It's still a little weak. Uh, I wish they put a little bit more thought into the battery life. Let me go into a little bit more detail about the touchpad itself. I'm going to take it out of its docking station right now. I'll show you the docking station. The docking, docking station is pretty straightforward, a lot like an iPhone dock. It has the sort of USB or HDMI type plug, a little not standard. Um, and then it has the standard LAN plug and power plug into the back, so the power plug could go into here or into the unit itself. Uh, this is terribly uh, important for that purpose because if you're going to plug it into the unit, then the only thing that you'd get was is the LAN. And I'll talk more about the internet connection later. Here's the unit itself. I'm going to turn it around so you can see the back of it. it. Has a little stand so that it can stand up on its own even when it's not in the docking station. And I'll stand it up like that right now. Um, I've been a little disappointed in the touchpad itself. If you're used to using uh, any, any kind of iPad or touchpad uh, screens, you'll find the interface really counterintuitive here. I'm going to move this a little bit closer so we can get a better look at it. And I'm going to start touching the screen. I'm going to touch the top button here, which will bring this menu back into focus. The touchpad is not very sensitive, and it's occasionally hard to get it. I see right now I'm tap, sort of tapping on the settings. But if I press it, there it goes. See, it just isn't what you'd expect out of a typical uh, modern screen. Touchpads have come a long way, and the sensitivity is usually a given. But on this system, I really find you have to hold a lot of these buttons, and sometimes even when you do, you just don't get a very responsive experience. And you can see I'm kind of cycling through the settings right now. Uh, there are quite a few settings. It has some nice features. They can be a little hard to navigate to. See, this is how you do the back button up here on the top. Again, sort of not standard and not very intuitive for people who are used to using standard devices. I'm going to touch, touch this here on top again. As you can see, the second camera keeps going out. As you can see, it keeps cutting in and out. So I'm really unimpressed with the, the range of these cameras. In theory, the other cameras right here, as you might have noticed, you can see that it's point, something's pointing right at the... Um, 
something pointing right at the uh, the screen, and that's this second camera. I have it set up here just so we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, so obviously it works when it's this close, but just being 15 feet away with one wall in between, you'd think that that'd be no problem for a camera, a wireless camera. But unfortunately, while it does seem to connect at least a lot of the time, and a lot of the times just by hitting this top button I can get it to reset, right now it just won't connect at all. It's pretty poor range, uh, and like a lot of the things about this unit, just not very impressive compared to some of the, the uh, competition. Uh, what I do like about it has a very clear picture. I want to briefly discuss the Security Man software. It's supposed to be compatible with iPhones and Androids and allow you to connect your phone to the Security Man security system. I've never been able to do this, but I wanted to show you the software called WatchBot by Eric Zhu that uh, they say is supposed to work. Uh, it does work fairly nicely. Uh, I was able to install it okay. Uh, it has a very simple method for scanning uh, by LAN or QR code. I used QR code and was able to scan my camera in, but I was never able to connect to it even though I was connected to the internet using the base's LAN cable. I contacted their customer support and they suggested that uh, maybe it was the, a bad base and that I should send it back. And I haven't really gotten around to doing that, to be honest. I've had enough problems with the camera that uh, I really wasn't going to go any further with it. So I just wanted to show you this, let you know that it is a possibility that you might be able to connect to it, but unfortunately I haven't been able to, so maybe you can find some better information than I have on it, but that's all I have to report on it. Thanks.